I'm Jenny Lillydahl, one of the co-founders of Gilda's Club Twin Cities. I'm also an, a volunteer. I teach the Improv for Life class at Gilda's Club. And on behalf of the entire Gilda's Club community that you see surrounding you, welcome to the Gilda's Club Twin Cities Gather to Give Breakfast. Thank you guys for being here so much. As you've just seen in that video montage, we've been on quite a journey since we opened our doors eight years ago. We are so grateful that many of you have been with us from the, since the very beginning, really. But whenever or wherever you became engaged with Gilda's Club, even if this is your very first time joining us, we want to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of our continuing mission to ensure that no one faces cancer alone. More than eight years ago, we imagined a place but today we're reimagining places that Gilda's Club Twin Cities can be when anyone anywhere needs the special kind of support that you can only get at Gilda's Club Twin Cities. Two years ago when the pandemic hit and we had to temporarily close the clubhouse, we pivoted to virtual programming in less than 24 hours. We did not miss one group or one program. Yes, I think you should applaud. And while it is very nice to be back in the clubhouse, in fact, I'm teaching a second improv class there on Tuesdays. In fact, um, it's going, going virtual is actually the lifeline many of our members really needed. So I also teach improv virtually on Wednesdays for the members who prefer to experience the clubhouse from their comforts of their own home. In fact, we're going to give you a taste of the life of Gilda's Club right now. So I'd like to invite a couple of our Gilda's Club Improv for Life Improv members to come on up here and join me on stage. Give them a round of applause. So every Gilda's Club program and offering is a chance for members to connect, to connect and immerse themselves in a community of love and support. And in the improv class, for example, sometimes we talk directly about cancer, but other times we forget about it altogether. And above all, it really is about that connection. And, and in improv, sometimes that connection is through laughter. So we're going to take you now to a typical warm up that we might do in our improv class. All right, so we're going to gather over here. How are you guys feeling? Good, good, good. Good, good. Okay. We're going to do an improv warm up for you. So I'm going to look at one of you and I'm going to clap and you're going to clap with me. And then you will pick somebody else with your eyes and clap with them. Okay. No verbal. We're not talking. No talking, Randy. <laughs> you're the one that keeps talking. I know. Okay. So we're going to make eye contact and clap together. And this is completely random and it's just about connecting with each other. All right. Ready? Okay, now Ginny, pick someone and clap. Okay, Randy, pick someone and clap. Kate, awesome, I'm coming back to you. Okay, good, good. And what we're doing is we're working on just connecting and getting present in the moment, forgetting about our day, forgetting maybe even about cancer for right now. We're smiling, we're smiling, <laughs> yes. And if, if one of us screws up, we just figure it out and keep it going. All right, good, good, and we're gonna, good, awesome. Here we go, here we go. All right, all right, give them a round of applause. Woo! And if you were worried that we're gonna make you do this, we are. So everyone stand up. Stand up at your table, you can do this. I'm sorry, it's so early, it's so early. We have to wake up and connect. All right, so someone in your circle is going to be brave. I'll give you a little bit more instruction before you start. Literally, you just someone will start. You're going to look at somebody, make eye contact, raise your hands, and clap. It helps if you smile. To, it helps if you give them a little warning you're coming to them. And if, if something gets messed up, this is life. We just pick it up and we keep going. We don't criticize. Oh, they're going already over there. OK. <laughs> we better keep up with them. All right, someone brave in each table. Raise your hand and begin. All right, let's go. <laughs> clap together. Clap together. Clap together. 
You can do this. Slow, slow. Good job, good job. Keep going. Good job, good job. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for doing that. We now know who the control freaks are in the room, the ones at your table telling everyone how to do it. All right. Hopefully, hopefully you made some connection. Hopefully I saw a lot of laughter. That's awesome. Hopefully you laughed together. And maybe you were even a little bit uncomfortable. And that's really normal when we have to do things that are unexpected, uh, when we have to face things that are a little bit scary. And if you were uncomfortable, know that you just stepped into the shoes of someone who has cancer. Gilda's Club is not the place someone expects to find themselves, because it means that either they or somebody they love has cancer. However, once they're here, once they're in our clubhouse, virtual or physical, they find that connection with community, that uncomfortableness is quickly filled with comfort, connection, joy, and sometimes laughter. So welcome to Gilda's Club Twin Cities. All right, this morning you are going to hear from staff, volunteers, members about our new reality of two clubhouses, one virtual, one physical, and how, with your support, we will be able to fulfill our mission even more completely. But before we head into our program, I ask you to please join me in thanking some very important individuals and organizations who, through their investment of time, talent, and financial support, helped to open the clubhouse in 2014 and are continuing to ensure that we serve our community today. And by the way, if you look at people's name tags, you'll see how the different ways people are supporting Gilda's Club. And while I know it's difficult, we're going to hold our applause till the end, okay? So I'm going to rattle through a few of these. Um, as we begin, I'd like to first recognize the co-founders of Gilda's Club Twin Cities with myself, Carrie Pewterbra and Dolly Lowry. Yes. Oh, and you, come on. All right, all right. I'll let you applaud that time. Yes, okay. <laughs> Holding our applause. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you first to the table hosts. Those are the lovely people who invited you here today. Um, next, we're going to move on to our sponsors, and you'll see those on the screen. And thank you to our sponsors. They made sure that we could have this event fully paid for. That means every single dollar we raise today will go to delivering on our mission. So thank you so much to our gold sponsors. Yes, Mars and Power, Medica, RBC Wealth Management, and our silver sponsor, Alina Health. All right, we're going to applaud through the whole dang thing. Go ahead. All right. Our bronze sponsors, Blue Lagoon Marine, Minneapolis Radiation Oncology, Preyo, and Thrivent, and our in-kind contributors, Brandspeak and Capecci Communications, who produced our program today. Uh, also, a very special thank you to our leaders in giving, whose gifts have set an example of generosity and philanthropy and support for our community, ensuring the success of this event today. Finally, thanks to our dedicated board members, some of whom you'll hear from today, and our fabulous, I've always said, the world's best volunteers, our Gildas Club volunteers, who worked on this event and who work all year round to make sure Gildas Club operates and serves the community. And I'd like to ask our red t-shirt volunteers to wave. Yes, and there they are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, for the beautiful music, thank you to Berg and Lewis. And now you can applaud, yes. All right, today you're going to hear many ways, in the many ways that people engage with Gilda's Club Twin Cities, sort of a day in the life of Gilda's Club. You already saw a little bit of the improv program. There are people in this room who have deep, long connections with Gilda's Club and who know every nook and cranny of our bricks and mortar clubhouse. 
And there are also members here who have experienced only our virtual clubhouse and from the comfort and ease of their homes and whose connections are just as strong as, and as important. And this morning, we're gonna celebrate every connection the connections you made today even, the many roles we play, whether it's old guard or a new generation of leadership, whether you're a member, a volunteer, a donor, a board member, because it takes all of us to prove daily that community is stronger than cancer. So to start us off, please join me in welcoming Gilda's Club member, improv student, and my friend, Randy Clouk. I'll hug you from All right, just calm down, people. <laughs> In table five, keep the clanging of the forks down, please. <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. I am Randy Clouk. I'm a retired television photojournalist and also a retired elementary library media specialist. Two excellent careers. I'm also a still photographer, as you can see by the pictures that are scrolling. I'm happy to be here this morning to talk about my connection to Gilda's Club Twin Cities. I first came to Gilda's in October of 2019 after being diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. Yes, men, we too can get it. A friend of mine, a breast cancer survivor, told me about Gilda's Club. Now, almost three years later, I schedule my days around my Gilda's commitments. The support and community are that important to me. I began by going to a support group at the clubhouse. After I got comfortable, I began a yoga class, went to Dudes and Donuts, and a Euro Cafe. I did all of these things in the clubhouse until things went virtual. The switchover from in-person to virtual was seamless for me. The staff at Gilda's really had their act together. After things went all virtual, I began comedy, improv, and meditation, and going <laughs> Going virtual was pretty sweet as I'm a night owl and attending remotely meant I could sleep in and not have to worry about the drive time to the clubhouse. I will say my being here this morning shows how much I believe in the mission of Gilda's Club. I'm here, awake, <laughs> somewhat coherent. I mean, I mean, they, they made me be here at 4.30 to set the tables. Whether in person or virtual, the Gildas community is really important to me. For example, we have a tradition in my support group that when a member dies, we write their name on a rock, and then we pass that rock around and we each hold it, thinking some positive thoughts about that person. The rock then goes into a vase in our meeting room where we always can remember them. Our group added the tradition of saving a marble for those departing in health when someone feels that they no longer need the services, that they're a survivor, they might move on. So we started putting a marble in there so it wasn't all just about the morning. Page two. <laughs> We're a community. We get together, at least a few of us, Outside of meetings for lunch, entertainment, or support, I might have had an hour and a half phone call at midnight recently with a member friend. I think she's here today. There's nothing like people who are going through the same journey and who get it. I tell everyone about Gilda's Club. I had a sale on my photography about a year ago and raised $1,100 for Gilda's. People were so responsive, they paid more for the photos than what I was asking because they know what Gilda's means to me. I don't know how long I have to live with the cancer I have, but I know that what I'm doing with the time I have remaining is important, not just for me, but for those who come after me to get the most they can from Gilda's. My oncologist said this to me not so long ago. If you're going to work so hard to live, then you better be making good of this life. The impact we have as a community ripples outward and touches us all. Good, the ripples are up there. <laughs> I did it! This winter, I attended a funeral for a member of my support group. After the service, I introduced myself to her husband and to her teenage daughter, and I let them know how much she loved them and talked of them. 
I got a nice card from her husband afterward, and I quote, your gifts of care and sharing through the support group are priceless. That's what Gildas Club Twin Cities means to me and to so many. It's about the giving back. Thank you all for being here today. The first time I came to Gilda's Club, it was 2018. My mother had passed away earlier that year, and I thought volunteering could be a way for me to channel my grief into something positive, but I really didn't know what to expect. I remember going through the red doors and meeting warm and lovely Gilda Greeter here that day. I remember waiting in the lobby, and I was surprised how much like a living room it looked. I'm like, oh, this is really nice. And then I was welcomed into the It's Always Something room. I will always be connected to that space because it's really where I got my introduction to Gilda's Club. The room is the center of the clubhouse, but it's also really private. Like you always know it's there for you. I had so many butterflies that day. I had no idea what the outcome would be of that very first visit. All right, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just had my coffee, y'all, so please bear with me. It's still kicking in a little bit. Um, but my name is Shaniqua James, and I'm the program director here at Gilda's Club Twin Cities, something that I am so proud to say as I started as a volunteer and then moved into a facilitator role, and now here I am. Um, when my mom died of breast cancer back in 2018, I struggled daily with feelings of loneliness and grief, something that I know a lot of our members experience as well when they come to Gilda's. But the beauty that is the Gilda way, community, connectedness, and laughter, especially laughter, if you guys don't know, I'm very funny. Um, <laughs> but you'll get to know it, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Gilda, the Gilda way revived those feelings for me. And so here I am with the privilege and the honor to be supporting people who have had similar experiences with cancer and living in a purpose that I know would make my mom proud. So I promised myself I wouldn't cry. So I need you guys to do me a favor. If I start to tear up, just say thug life and I'll get it together, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so when I talk about my journey coming to Gilda's, I always joke that I was hypnotized by those big bright red doors of Gilda's. The first step through those red doors is always an important moment, um, especially for our members. And now that those who are attending virtual clubhouse, it's the new member meeting that they get to go to over Zoom. Regardless of how and where members engage with us, they know our proven one-of-a-kind program of social and emotional support is waiting for them, designed for those who know firsthand what it means to live with cancer. Our program is based on five core components of support, including weekly and monthly support groups where our members gather with their peers and licensed mental health facilitator to process the most intimate parts of their journey. Social activities like nitwits, one of my personal favorites because they're so funny and inappropriate, um, <laughs> where members can gather, engage, and laugh in activities that are meaningful for them. We also have healthy lifestyle classes like yoga or tai chi, where members are able to use mind-body connections to really align and learn a new skill like cooking. Educational support, where members learn about varying topics related to treatment, mental health, and everything in between and information and referrals, a service that is provided for members who need extra support in any area of life, such as lodging for treatments um, in, any, in another city if they have to do that. Each of these pillars is vital in supporting our members, wherever they may be on their cancer journey, and thanks to the support of all of you, everything is provided what I like to call free 99. So that means no charge to any of our members. Over the past two years, many members, like Randy, went from spending every day in the comfort of the physical clubhouse location to unexpectedly and swiftly having to shift to a virtual platform, and which honestly felt like a whole other world. The members of Gilda's have shown remarkable adaptability and resilience, which has allowed for them to create their own clubhouses, which um, wherever they are, that can be at their home, at their work, wherever. 
Our virtual clubhouse has opened up a world where there are no limits to access to social and emotional support, especially during a worldwide pandemic where the needs are increased drastically. It has truly been Gilda Magic. The birth of the virtual clubhouse has given us permission to envision red doors wherever our members are, which we like to call Gilda's on the go. We envision a clubhouse where members are able to access the five pillars of our support in their communities. Um, and it's not limited by distance to our physical clubhouse. Gilda's on the go is where working professionals who are impacted by cancer are able to gather in their respective employers and process their personal cancer journeys. There is no better time than right now to reimagine how we deliver our five pillars of support with implementation of culturally specific support groups across Minnesota so that historically marginalized populations and communities can also feel connected, wanted, and a sense of belonging and understanding. This is Gilda's on the go, this is Gilda's reimagined, and this is the Gilda way. Honestly, and I'm really, really being honest, I want all of you to be hypnotized by those red doors at some point in your life. So if you haven't visited the red clubhouse doors physically or in the virtual world, please come visit us. Um, and over the course of this morning's program, you will hear from a variety of members, uh, volunteers and staff about their own personal unique experiences um, with the virtual and the physical clubhouses. Each of these personal stories inspires us to dream up your own possibilities of connectedness and community. Your own Gilda's Clubhouse. Whether behind the big red doors in Minnetonka or the virtual red doors of your home or job, thank you for joining us in envisioning, reimagining, and building and sustaining community. That's it. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm Annie Stone. I am the manager of Member Path here at Gilda's Club. I'm also a licensed marriage and family therapist. A big part of my job is welcoming new members into our community and giving them space to listen to their stories about how they're living their best lives as long as they can. One of the people I've met along the way is Sharon Carmody. Wow, that's great. Good morning. Uh, I'm Sharon Carmody. I'm really happy to be here to share my story today. Um, so once upon a time in May of 2019, I was just a local ER doctor going about my own business when over a period of less than a week, I began to have trouble speaking. At first, it was pretty subtle. I just wasn't as fluent as I normally was but it progressed to the point where I really had to think about speaking, and then I had to limit the words I was using in my sentences. And finally, I started to drool when I was drinking my coffee. You might pick up a coffee theme here this morning. <laughs> I was scared, and I called a friend who um, uh, ordered an MRI for me, and unfortunately, it was abnormal. And I had several brain lesions, uh, including a big goose egg sitting right on my speech center. I had a whirlwind workup, and the bad news was stage four melanoma. My knowledge of me metastatic melanoma was minimal, but I knew that it was like capital B bad. Uh, the one thing I could remember was uh, a CT that I had ordered on a young patient um, who literally had hundreds of brain lesions. So I was pretty sure that my brain was going to look just like that probably the next week, and I was going to be dead in six months. So I kicked into overdrive, and basically I was preparing to die. I went to many, many medical appointments. I met with an estate attorney to write my will and my health care directives. I had those fun discussions with my health care designees, and I completed the paperwork to donate my body. I started seeing a therapist. I started a Caring Bridge page, and I made an appointment at Gilda's Club. I'm not 100% sure where I got the Gilda's brochure. I remember my first meeting with Annie. She was trying really hard to do her intake, and I was trying really hard to answer the questions, but I was having a really difficult time making coherent sentences. I was pretty good at blurting out profanities, though, <laughs> which made it a memorable experience for both of us. <laughs> 
any assigned me to the Living with Cancer group that meets Tuesdays at 1 p.m. I started at the clubhouse and then went virtual, and now we're back in person. Yay. My hope was that the group would help me cope with dying. What it has accomplished, though, is helping me to learn to live with cancer. Duh, I know, it's in the name, <laughs> living with cancer. As a medical professional, I really thought I knew something about the quote-unquote end of life, but I never had stage four cancer. My family and friends bent over backwards to be understanding and supportive. But the only people that really got what I was going through were my fellows at Gilda's. We all have a life-threatening diagnosis. We all know what it's like to wonder if this is your last summer or your last birthday, or even if you'll be alive tomorrow. This loss of horizon has been the most difficult thing for me to swallow. But everyone in my Gilda's community is in the same boat. And I've learned how to focus on living my best life from them and how to live more in the moments I have. Now, you might think it's morose to answer an invitation with, sure, if I'm still alive and feeling good, but that's my reality. And I've had to say that a lot, especially for invitations are, that are not for tomorrow or next week. Now, if a big birthday's coming up, I'm inviting everyone I know. <laughs> in ordering and having food trucks. <laughs> if a friend tells me about a camp in Florida where I can learn to row a single skull, I'm getting off my indoor rower and I'm going to camp. And I'm gonna find a local rowing club to join. Cruise to Eastern Europe, absolutely. Pastel landscaping class, why not? Climb Mount Kilimanjaro, sure if I'm still alive and feeling good. <laughs> Which luckily in February of this year, I was. When I first came to the Living With Cancer group, I learned so much from the other members. I was definitely in the receiving phase, especially since I couldn't talk. <laughs> Everyone was there for me when I had side effects from immunotherapy or problems with a difficult relationship or with my job. And when I started to do better, I'd like to think that I was there for others in the same way. And then just when I was feeling cocky, I had a recurrence and I had to have more surgery and more radiation. Gildas was there for me. Since my diagnosis, connecting with Gildas is probably the smartest move I have made. Thanks everyone for being here this morning. Thank you, Sharon. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. John Pajkowski. Please call me JP. I'm the vice chair for the board of Gilda's Club Twin Cities. Um, it is such an honor to be here with all of you today supporting this phenomenal organization and uh, here in no small part to honor my sister Anna who passed away from uterine cancer some 20 years ago. She was a natural theater talent and would have loved the programs and support that Gilda's offers. It is through your support and the broader community that we have this wonderful resource to offer to those in need. So thank you so much. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Ann Blaze, Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Minnesota in the Division of Hematology, Oncology, and Transplantation. As a medical oncologist, Dr. Blaze has a special interest in the late effects of cancer therapy. We are also delighted to have her on the Medical Advisory Board for Gilda's Club. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Ann Blaze. Wow, it's really amazing to see all of you. I am very pleased to be here with you today. Um, anyone who knows me in the cancer community as a colleague, a friend, or a medical professional will hear me talk about Gilda's Club. As a medical oncologist and the director of cancer survivorship services at the University of Minnesota, the topic of cancer survivorship, living well during and for those who are done with treatment after treatment is important to me and important to our community. 
I'm a medical oncologist treating many patients on active cancer treatment. I also help lead the Adult Cancer Survivorship Program. And in this program, we address how patients, both children and adults, stay well after they have gone through cancer. It's a consultative service where we review their cancer treatments and build a recommendation of what they need to do to stay well. What we recommend is very much compatible with the programs offered by Gilda's Club. One of our goals is that people feel they are part of a community. I think you're gathering a theme here. The second goal is to feel like they have resources and tools on how to regain, re-enter into life and living and feeling well, not focused on being sick. As a medical oncologist, it's so rewarding to know that today we can address many cancers very well. I also see many individuals living with their cancer too. And to these people, cancer has become a chronic disease. For them, continuing to live well is also important. When a patient is going through cancer treatment, whether it be chemotherapy, radiation, immunotherapy, or surgery, they're intensely involved with their oncologist. After treatment, there are many issues to address. Often these are addressed during treatment as well. This might be weight gain or weight loss, changes in muscle mass, complications due to therapies, or dealing with depression, anxiety, or fear of recurrence. Getting patients back into life and helping them manage these issues or any long-term complications is very important. And there's a growing awareness in the medical community that in addition to medical treatment, emotional and psychosocial support is very important. This combination is what I like to call a prescription for wellness. This prescription for wellness must come from more than one resource. It's not just from the physician. Oftentimes it means a nutritionist or a physical therapist or a psychologist. It's a team that helps get people living with cancer back into wellness. It's also very important for people to know that they are not alone. This is something I hear from many patients and it's important for families too. I use that word family loosely as sometimes it's a friend or a significant other, whoever the support system is. Family members also feel alone and are in need of support. Gilda's Club is an excellent resource to help fill the prescription for wellness. There's only so much that can be accomplished during a doctor patient visit. There are limits to our health systems and we need to use more of our community resources. Gilda's Club fills a much needed role in our Twin Cities community. Gilda's Club also provides support for family members and caregivers who too need support to find a place that they fit, where they can share their worries, their anxieties, their situations, and someone will actually listen and may actually understand. I often tell my patients and their families about Gilda's Club. And when I see my patients the next time and ask how their visit to the clubhouse or their virtual session was, I always hear good things about it. My patients come back and say, I finally felt like I was heard or that I wasn't alone. My colleague, Dr. Kareem Sadak and I have given survivorship workshops at the clubhouse. And my first thought when I walked through the red doors was, wow, this is great. Kareem said the same thing. He actually went earlier that day to check out another of Gilda's Club's programs um, and was quite impressed. Another colleague of mine, Dr. Rachel Vogel, is involved in looking at the needs of cancer survivors across the state of Minnesota. Other colleagues are involved in the medical board, supporting the mission of the program, recognizing the need and the importance of its programs and helping patients and their families to continue to live well and to find support. The programs of support at Gilda's Club are a true benefit in our community. To those living with cancer, to the family and friends supporting those living with cancer, and to the medical community. If you haven't been to Gilda's Club Twin Cities, whether you are a patient, a caregiver, a provider, or anyone in this room, you should go, virtually or in person, and see what they offer. I believe you too will say, wow, this is great. Thank you.
Okay. There we go. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I'm Renee Anderson, and my role at Gildas Club is as administrative and volunteer coordinator. I chose to work here because everyone that works at Gildas Club, from our staff members to our volunteers, truly cares about supporting this community. Now, please welcome me. Uh, please join me in welcoming another member of our community, Immaculate Aburu. Hi, my name is Immaculate. So I live in Coon Rapids, which is about 30 minutes away from the clubhouse in the Twin Cities and I'm going to give you a tour of my clubhouse from home. So behind me are my closet doors. I've put this contact paper up because I like the way it looks. I had to create my own office when the pandemic began as I started working from home. And I wanted to make it look nice for myself and for whomever might be Zooming in with me, like you folks. So behind me, I have a quote that is my own personal thing that I say that don't edit yourself out of life. And then I have a cartoon of really amazing, inspirational women from all walks of life in all countries. And then I have my books here. In front of me is a window into my backyard because I like natural light. I also like to see the weather as it changes every second of the day. And then I have my plants and some art wanted it to look nice and cozy because I knew I was going to be spending a lot of time here. I started coming to Gilda's a little over two years after my diagnosis and subsequent treatment. I'd been attending exclusively online uh, offerings at Gilda's from the post-treatment group, the African-American group, and the coffee talk groups that I've been attending as well as art therapy. I was really looking for a community of sorts, people who have walked a similar path and whose lives have been touched by cancer in a really intimate way. And that's kind of what I found here. When your life gets touched by cancer, whether you are the patient, survivor, caregiver, friend of, loved one of, someone with cancer, you become a member of a club you never really wanted to be. And I think there's a certain loneliness and isolation that comes with it. I think that when you find people who have walked that walk, um, they might have a different type of cancer than you, different severity, they might have had cancer decades ago or are still going through treatment. They understand this walk in a way that can't be explained to someone who hasn't. And I think that if there is a way to find a place where you feel a little less lonely in this world, then it's worth taking that chance to find those people. And I think that the hope for that is why I would encourage someone to come to Gilda's, is to find people who make you feel a little less lonely in this world. Ooh. All right, got it. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bree Garcia Myers, and I'm the Marketing and Development Director at Gilda's Club. I began working at Gilda's Club because I was drawn to the community here. A community of strength, of laughter, acceptance, and hope. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce our Executive Director, Catherine Todd. Good morning. What a beautiful group you are. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Brie, for that warm introduction. And thank you for all that you've done and what our dedicated staff, our founders, our volunteers, board members, facilitators, instructors, 
<laughs> members, family members, caregivers, donors, medical advisory board members, university research partners, interns, colleagues in cancer support, and our community partners. <sighs> I know that is a long list, but that's a list that we want to reflect every single time that we enter Gilda's Club Twin Cities, because that's what we are. We're about community at Gilda's Club. Because when we talk about community, it's not in an abstract way or an idealized way. Community is very real at Gilda's Club. We create, we nurture, we celebrate, and we depend on community. In order to fulfill and ensure our mission that no one faces cancer alone and that community is always stronger than cancer. When I walked through the red doors myself almost 10 months ago now, it's hard to believe, I got goosebumps and then I immediately teared up. I knew that I had found a place to share my experience as a nurse, my passion as a leader, and my compassion as a wife who lost her husband to cancer. In fact, my late husband, Eric, would have loved Gilda's Club. He was a Saturday Night Live fan through and through. We grew up on it. You could hear especially um, Gilda Radner igniting laughter in our homes. Eric would have loved Jenny's improv group. He would have dived right in with the Dudes and Donuts crew, and he would have been right at every Birds and Brew meetup to capture that once in a lifetime photo that he managed to get a million times over. He would have made fast friends with Randy in the halls of the clubhouse. When I saw Gilda's shining, smiling face when I walked through those doors, I couldn't help but feel Eric right by my side. That's what Gilda's does. It makes sure that we find the silver lining in every dark cloud and the, we never face this journey alone. As too many of you know, a single cancer diagnosis can ripple effects outward to our friends and our family and our coworkers. Well, Gilda's Club can ripple as well. And we ripple outward, adding circle after circle after circle of support. There are people in this room who first saw the need for a Gilda's Club. Thank you to our founders and to everyone who followed to get to this exciting moment. Many of you may be meeting Gilda's Club for the first time today because someone invited you to their table. They have a personal reason for being here and they thought you too might have a personal reason for joining us. Welcome. Whether you are new or familiar, you are why I was drawn to Gilda's Club Twin Cities. Because it has been built by the community, for the community, and 100% funded by the community. Community is also how we get things done here at Gilda's Club. If you haven't figured that out from uh, this morning's breakfast, we look to each other with openness. We listen with respect. We shore each other up, like our members and, our, and their families do every single day facing cancer. Since starting as executive director, I can't believe how quickly the board, staff, volunteers rolled up their sleeves to get us to the challenges of this past year. As a result, we successfully reopened the clubhouse in October. We launched our new virtual clubhouse to meet folks online in their homes during that shutdown, and our program visits have increased 16% over pre-pandemic numbers. Ooh, yes, that's a good, that is a silver lining of COVID. Yeah, we don't, there are not a lot of silver linings for COVID, but that is one for sure. We are fully committed to increasing our reach and our access and are now helping more Minnesotans facing cancer than ever before. In addition, our amazing community rallied to reimagine new ways to meet our financial goals after COVID canceled in-person events like this one. We 
now have ended our year in a stronger position than where we started. Our sincere gratitude to each and every one of you who helped us to get to this place. While this is all very encouraging, we cannot rest until we can say that any Minnesotan facing cancer can access our support. Shaniqua mentioned that we are diving in deep to understand access barriers, to understand how we can actively build support channels to those not currently able to access our support. Whether it is a rural farmer or a St. Paul resident who lacks transportation, we are seeking to stretch to meet the need. While we are currently still facing many barriers and working to overcome them, one of them you can help us with today. We are called to GCTC for so many different reasons and at so many different points in our cancer journeys. But however we get here, whether it's virtually like Immaculate or actually like Sharon, we find open hearts, open ears, and extreme generosity of spirit. That's why all of us do what we do. And that's why we're all here this morning. To keep our clubhouses open, active, accessible to anyone and everyone, wherever they need us. Thank you for supporting Gilda's Club Twin Cities and for being here this morning with us in person. It's so beautiful to see your faces. And I'd like to bring all of our voices together to say, community is stronger than cancer. 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 Oh, okay. One more time. Join us. Community is stronger than cancer. That was so beautiful to see from this perspective. As you probably know, this event is what is the most important event for Gildas Club. And this moment of our breakfast is a very, very important moment. My name is Elena Beckius, and I'm a board member here at Gilda's Club. And it's truly my honor in thanking you for your past support, and also thanking for you for your support this morning. Our goal this morning is to raise $200,000. It's big. But I want you to know that because of our sponsors, because of some of the supporters that Jenny mentioned, we are already halfway there. Pretty awesome. I do want to share just a little bit about how the support is used here at Gilda's. A $150 gift this morning will cover the cost of an improv class that Jenny teaches. A $10,000 gift would cover programming and operations for a month here at Gilda's. Every gift that we receive this morning is meaningful, and I want to be clear about that. And I also want to be very bold, very bold, on behalf of our members and our future members and asking a few bold donors to give at that $10,000 level this morning if you're able. But if you can contribute at any level, I want you to know that here at Gilda's Club, we will be great stewards of your gifts serving our members. And as you've heard, thanks to all of the speakers so far, we're so excited about being in person with our members, but we're also very, very excited about continuing to open the doors to a virtual clubhouse. And we can't do that without your support. 
And there are several ways that you can give this morning. So if you want to draw your attention to the screen, of course, we would be thrilled to be a recipient of a one-time gift. We would be thrilled to be the recipient of ongoing gifts. There might be unique and thoughtful planned giving um, opportunities within your financial plan. And also, I come from financial services, so I know what the stock market has been doing over the last decade, and you might have some appreciated stock that you're wanting to get rid of. <laughs> and we'll take it. <laughs> you can also see on the commitment card that there are opportunities to volunteer, and we love our volunteers at Gilda's Club. We love our volunteers. Several of you might have even opportunities to apply for an employee match at your, at your job. And if you do have that as an offering, as a benefit, we will help make that um, happen. So please check that off on your commitment card. You might also see on the commitment card that there's opportunities to sponsor a day. And this is a new offering here at Gildas Club. My mother-in-law, Pat, passed away to brain cancer in 2013. The services that Gildas provide would have made a meaningful difference in her journey. And seeing Pat's need, seeing the gap in her cancer journey was one of the reasons why I wanted to come on board here at Gildas Club. When I heard about the opportunity to sponsor a day, I jumped on it. We love having the opportunity to say her name and to share her story and talk about who she was as a wife, as a mom, as a grandma, as an educator, as a family member and a friend. My family and I know what it's like to experience cancer without a support community. And we don't want that for anyone else. So if you have somebody in your life that you'd want to honor and say their name and tell their story, think about sponsoring a day. It was so fun. We did it on Pat's birthday, by the way. It was a fun birthday party. No matter how you're able to give this morning with your time, with your talent, with your financial resources, I just want to say thank you. Every gift makes a difference to our members and to our future members. You truly are the Gildas Club community, and we know that community is stronger than cancer. So at this point, I do want to ask our table hosts, our gracious table hosts, to please pass out the envelopes and materials to your guests this morning. We're going to take a couple minutes to take a look at the commitment cards and please fill them out and then please hand them back to your table hosts. So table hosts, I'll give you a minute, an opportunity to pass those out and then we'll just take a couple minutes here. You might also notice that there is a QR code in your packet and on screen. 
if you want to use the QR code, go ahead and take a picture of the QR code and follow the prompts. And that's just a really simple and secure way to make your donation this morning. And if you choose to go the QR code route, no need to fill out the paper commitment card. So thank you. I see most of you are just wrapping up. Sure, sure. All right. I have a little bit of an adjustment to make. I've just been told by my boss that I do need you to fill out the form. All you need to do is your name and your contact information and that you did the QR code because we want to very appropriately thank you. So I know I represent our board members, our Gildas Club team, and all of our members when I th say thank you so much for being here with us this morning and thank you so much for your generosity. I'm gonna turn it back over to Jenny. We welcome you to stay and talk and connect with each other. I have one more thank you I'd like you to help me with and that is um, just as a testament to the strength and love that permeates our community. We have two former staff people who ran today's program, Allie and Lori. Could we give them a round of applause? We, they just couldn't stay away. We're so awesome. Thank you all. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Get some sun. We are so grateful to you for being here. Please spread the word. And thank you to everyone who made this such a beautiful program. Enjoy your time together.